I'm here in Tucson. I step out the doors of the airport and like the warm, dry air just hits me. I love it. It feels so good to be back. Hey, I'm Lex Albrecht and I'm in Tucson, Arizona. It's the middle of the winter right now, but this is the desert, so it's super warm, super sunny, and perfect for cycling. Usually I do come here to ride my bike, but this time I'm here for a different reason. And if you're looking for a really cool cycling related experience, you're gonna wanna check this out. I'm here at Tucson's Frame Building School and I'm going to be doing an 11 day steel bike frame building course. Not only am I gonna learn how to build a bike frame, I'm actually gonna build my own frame that I'll be able to take home and well, take on some really cool adventures. The school is in a really central part of Tucson, which is nice because it's close to the grocery store, uh, really cool cafes, great places to go for walks, and the loop cycling path, which is great for cycling or jogging. This is the workshop here, and it's also the classroom. So each student has their own desk, this, and we each have our own computer with a screen, and on the computer, uh, this is where we're designing our bike frame. So the course is taught by master frame builder Dave Bowman, and it's really, really cool to learn from him. My name is David Bohm, and I guess most people would call me a frame building instructor. I've been doing this for about 30 years, about 20 of it as a frame builder professional. Honestly, it was just so many people asking me to learn how to do it that I eventually just kind of gave up on it and said, yeah, sure, I'll show you how. I offer a steel frame building class which allows someone to do almost anything within reason and using either lugs or fillet brazing. And I have a carbon fiber class where I teach people how to make composites. So two weeks with a weekend day off. And also the carbon fiber class is either seven days or 13 days, depending on whether or not they're beginner or advanced. I chose to stay at the frame building school during the course and it was a really good choice. So there are two bedrooms let me show you mine. Isn't it nice? But look at this. There's even one of Dave's frames in here. Isn't this neat? What is the thing that um, students usually have the most fun learning to do here? Oh, it's the fire. But the reality is that is, like I've told you, the smallest part of what I do, although it is kind of the rock and roll of our business. Who doesn't like big torches? This is another workshop, this is in the garage, and this is where all of the brazing goes on. So brazing is kind of like welding, but here are the torches, the tanks, this is oxygen, acetylene, that's the flux, the gas flux tank, and there are two setups because there are two students, which is nice, we can both be working or practicing at the exact same time. In the frame building course, we start out with theory. It lasts about a day and a half, and this is when we learn how geometry affects the handling of a bike. Depending on the type of bike that we want to build, we'll have to apply a different type of geometry to the frame. The really cool thing is that we can kind of tweak it just however we want to. Dave has a lot of experience building bikes, so he knows what generally will work and what will create like a horrendous ride. So right now we're trying to figure out which type of dropouts we're gonna put on our bikes. Oh, yes, yeah. Oh, wow. These are the rear dropouts. So the chain stay and the seat stays are gonna go in these little tabs here. I'm gonna pick these ones. Apparently they're not the easiest ones to install in the frame, but I think that's kind of cool because I'm gonna learn even more that way. Afterwards, we get into the more technical stuff or hands-on stuff, I should say, and we do a lot of different practice activities to learn how to apply the techniques that we've learned um, the theory on. This is pretty fun. And it's our first chance to learn how to use brand new tools. And there are a lot of them to learn. Let's take a look at my grazing job this time. I think it looks pretty decent, but I'm gonna have to ask Dave because he's a pro. We finished the practice parts, kind of like they were actually parts on the bike as well. So installing like dropouts onto fake chain stays and seat stays, and then we file them all down and finish them nicely so that once it comes time to actually working on the bike itself, we have the capacity and the knowledge to be able to do it properly without scrapping the entire frame. See, this piece doesn't quite meet up with the jig, so this tab needs to be bent a little bit more to bring the drop out in closer. When this is all finished, my bottom bracket will go through. Let's try it again. No more gap, looks like we got it. Now that I know that everything fits right, I'm gonna take 
it all back out again. And then I'll do some final prep before we graze the dropouts onto the seat stays. Then we move on to building the fork. The fork is actually the first part of the frame, even though it's technically not the frame, that we build. So we put the fork blades into the crown. I kept my fork blades nice and straight while my classmate bent his. Again, it was cool for me to watch my classmate do something that involved a technique that I didn't need to use because I got to learn how that technique was done without actually doing it on my bike. What I just did was I sawed my fork blade down to the correct size. So the length of my fork blade has been determined by my design here. You can see 360. So I cut it down to uh, 360 millimeters. There's still some work left to be done, which is a lot of filing. Okay. Take it over and put it into the jig and see if it fits. The left one in. So things that I'm noticing right away are that there's this, <laughs> you'll see how precise this has to be. There's a gap in between this part of the crown and the fork. And it's not quite tight right here either. This piece here can measure to see if the fork blades are even, and if it touches on both sides, like it is here, then they are. So that's a good sign. There are a lot of really cool things about this place, and one of them is that uh, the kitchen is right here at the school. So everything's right where we need it, whenever we need it, including this coffee at lunch. I just made a um, little tiny espresso with this little tiny milk pot. This place is so well equipped with all the tools, even the coffee tools. The final step before putting my fork together is that I have to practice silver brazing because silver has a much smaller window that you can work with it in terms of where it is in temperature. It's 50 degrees that window, whereas with bronze it's 500 degrees. So the technique is quite a bit different. Here is another mill. This is what we use to make miters. So those are curved cuts that we use to put two different tubes at different angles together. I like being able to watch this before I'm cutting tubes for my own bike. It's pretty cool. That's one of the reasons why I really like having a classmate. I can learn from them. I just mitered this down tube. This is the section that is gonna be right up against the bottom bracket and right now, I'm just cleaning it off to get it ready for the brazing. I also need to make sure that the tube is clean so that there aren't any impurities that could kind of make the brazing less effective and make it less strong. And I need my bike to be very strong because I'm planning and pushing a lot of power. So just as it's important to clean the outside of the tube before brazing, I've learned that it's very important to clean out the inside of the tube as well. So I'll get to it. There's my lug, there's my miter, there's my head tube. So the head tube would go into here. This, my miter is supposed to represent the down tube. It goes into here, let's, let's see. Oh, cool, okay. So I'm gonna put this into the stand and then I'm gonna silver braze this all together. That is the flux that's just like crackling as the tube cools down. It's pretty cool. While Nathan is cutting his chain stays, I'm gonna set up my frame tubes on this fancy jig, and hopefully today we'll start raising them all together. My uh, down tube is on the jig, and right up here where the head tube is, Looks like there's a little gap here and maybe one there. So I'm gonna take the actual sandpaper and try to file it down so I can get it just perfect. It's all in the details. It's gonna be so cool to ride this bike and like think about all these little exercises I've done or manipulations on the frame. Like, 
a lot of hard work is going into this. Now I'm going to put my C tube that has the bottom bracket area back onto the jig. So far, this is my favorite one because of my anchor that I made for the C collar. I'm really proud of this. My grandfather Manfred was a machinist who could fix and build anything. I loved exploring his massive mythical garage with all of the tools when I was little, and now I get to use similar ones to make my frame. Opa was also a passionate sailor, so this anchor that took me almost a day to make is in honor of him. My anchor, that's my uh, sea collar anchor. So we're getting really close to the final steps. I just finished brazing in my dropouts to the chain stays. Here's one that's cooling down. And pretty much all of my tubes for the front end of the bike are in the jig. And I'm just about to put some bronze flux, which is gonna protect the metal, on the inside of the tubes where the gas flux from the torch can't reach. Excellent, excellent. That's the ticket. That was great. You always work in like an X pattern. Yeah? Good. So now the next opposite quadrant is this one up here. So now my frame is in the jig and it's all tacked. That means that there are little pieces of bronze that I brazed on there that are holding the tubes in place. So it's not solid enough to ride, but it will hold itself together. So next what we want to do is make sure that the chain stays go into the jig as well. So I'm going to put them in some hot, hot water to soak this flux off. That's that white stuff there. And it's super hard to file off, but it comes off like super easy in hot water, which is funny. Now we're about to braise on the seat stays and it's well, pretty much the final part of the frame that we're actually sticking together. There will be some other finishing touches to add on, but this is the last bit. Like it really looks like a white frame now. This is the final thing that was braised on my frame. These little tiny pieces and what they're for are for a rear rack to be attached to the frame when I'm ready to go on an adventure. You can see that there's a lot of flux left here. I'm just going to stick it under some really hot water and it will wash right off. So we're now at the very final parts of the frame build and I'm surfacing my bottom bracket and then once this is done, the frame is going to be finished. Your certificate of completion here. Congrats. This yeah. is a big deal. Thank you. So suitable for framing, but um, yeah, you did great. So now you can hang that on the wall. Oh, this is so cool. I'm so proud of this. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Good. That's awesome. I am going to hang this on the wall. So you can see that this is a really neat environment to be in, to learn in, and to explore. And it's just, it looks cool in here too. I really, really like it. Not only just for like building frames, but also for the experience of the students. I really like it. At the very end of it all, we're left with something really, really special. Our very own bike frame, including the fork, that we can go on some really cool adventures with. The Frame Building School is a super cool experience and anybody can sign up for it. You can do the exact same thing. Check out framebuildingschool.com and you can see all the different options for course dates. If you can bring a bicycle to Tucson when you go to Frame Building School, you might want to stay a few extra days to ride Mount Lemon. This is Tucson's most well-known cycling spot and it's a 40 kilometer climb that goes from the hot desert up to over 8,000 feet where there are like pine trees and even some snow in the winter and spring. It's not too steep, so it's a pretty easy climb. And it's just so neat to go through the three or four different climate types all in one ride. The views are just spectacular.